Hi, my name is Jeff H. Seip, and I have over 10 years of recruiting experience, including five years at Google. In 1979, there was a study conducted with Harvard MBA graduates on goal setting. And prior to graduation, it was determined that 84% of the class had set no goals at all, 13% of the class had written goals but no concrete plans, and 3% of the class had actually written down their goals and had concrete plans. And 10 years later, the results were that 3% was earning 10 times the amount of money than the other 97%. And so how does this pertain to job interviewing? Just having the goal and even writing down the goal of saying, I want to work at Google or Amazon or Apple or Facebook, it's not enough. The writing down of the plan is what leads to great success. And ultimately, I think there is potential to earn 10 times more than your competitors, your counterparts, if you create an effective plan. If you like my content, please like. If you have any comments, please comment below. And if you like my overall content, please subscribe. Item one, write it down. Your interviewing plan will not be achieved if you do not write it down. Open up a Google Doc and start ideating. Map out what you think are the most important aspects of the job over interview and don't overthink it. I just want you to just open up that doc, start writing, get some things down on paper. You are going to develop and tweak this over time. So just start really, really basically and then you'll work on it. Item two, time allocation. That really depends on how soon is your interview. You are really going to want to allocate time for each item within your plan. So the second step is to really calendar time in every day. And ideally in this interview process, you at least have one or two weekends where you can really be spending, you know, six, eight, ten hours plus on this plan. And if you don't have a weekend day or you're seeing this video and you're a few days away from your interview and you're actively working, take a day off. It's really what's required to be successful. Consistency and repetition are going to be key. And so really allocate that time. Item three, company research. I want you to research the company before diving into the job description. And basically, I want you to really think about, okay, let's go to their website. Let's figure out the company mission, their vision, uh, the products, the services, etc. And then from there, you're probably going to want to see what's been happening in the news over the last week, month, year. Uh, you're definitely going to want to check out their social media. And of course, go to outlets like Glassdoor to see how they actually interview and any information you can find on interview questions, etc. And that's a great segue into item four, the job description. I cannot emphasize enough how important the job description is. Oftentimes, I would say at least half the time, it's like getting the keys to the castle. They're not only telling you what are the skills they want, but they're also telling you what are the skills you need to be successful in the job. And so you will want to pick apart that job description. I'll throw that card up there so you can see how to actually break down a job description and really make sure you're identifying the right questions. Item five, behavioral examples. Yes, this subject again. And so I want to break it down into four specific components. First, your best examples, regardless of the company, regardless of the position, you're probably going to have two, three, four just fantastic examples from your career. Get those down on paper first. Then second, you are going to want to start to think about the job description, about the role, about the company. And just based on your research, are there may be a few more, a little bit more specific examples that you've had in your career that correlate with the job that you can also write down. Third, is super niche examples. So for instance, that could be a time you coached somebody you were managing, another team member that was low performing into a high performing person. That's very niche, very specific, but it's an instance that many of us have had in our career. That would be just one example, but sometimes 
we have these super niche examples and we're just going to want to get those on paper too so maybe think in, in the rule of three, so three really strong examples, three position specific examples, and then maybe three niche examples. You don't have to have nine examples. It's just kind of a groundwork and a foundation to be thinking about. Fourth, adaptability of your examples. So I'm introducing this basically for the first time in this video, but I want you to be thinking about, can you take your top three great examples and maybe these examples involve working across business and technical teams, internally and externally. They had stakeholder conflicts, they had technical delays, et cetera. So if you have all these components within one example, well, if you get the stakeholder question, for instance, you might wanna spend a little bit more time developing a slightly different answer that focuses more just on the stakeholder component. Think, hey, if I have this really dynamic example, can I expand on it and make it a standalone example? I know that that's a little bit complex, but sometimes within our great big examples, we have these more defined examples that we'll just want to chop apart. If you don't get to that component, it's okay, but it's just something that I wanted to introduce. And remember, tweak, tweak, tweak these examples. Item six, open-ended frameworks. Obviously, this is a topic I have talked about a lot, and it, it's super, super tricky. So a framework is essentially a mini plan for how to tackle open-ended questions. If you don't have a plan for tackling these types of questions, you will lack structure, organization, and just an overall ability to impress your interviewer. First, create a default framework. This is your go-to. If you ever get stuck, this is your safety net. Think hey, this could be explored for essentially any open-ended question, and then you want to think, hey, does this make sense for this role, for this industry, et cetera? Second is mini frameworks. So these are a little bit more role-specific and likely a smaller framework. Think like three to five key talking points. For example, this could be how you develop strategy, how you do and conduct vendor interaction, et cetera. Um, it's anything that you potentially might face on the job. So if you get a question anywhere in this space, you at least have thought about a mini framework. And third, and maybe most important, is that mnemonic. And so creating a memorable mnemonic is really helpful re when remembering these frameworks. So think about the order first, and then switch around items to create something that has really good flow. So for instance, my PM 101 mnemonic is G, H, B, T, double R, triple S. And I created that because it had really good flow. Now, in this case, goals and objectives and historical data need to come first, and stakeholders and shared vision need to come last. But everything else I navigated in the middle to make it have good flow for me, and so I would remember it. Item seven, commonly asked questions. Yeah, unfortunately, companies are still asking these questions, and so have very specific answers to commonly asked questions, like tell me about yourself, why do you want to work here, etc. Two pieces of advice here. One, I think these questions, most of them, can be answered in one minute or less. Remember, there is no right advice on length of time. And then two, think in threes. Typically for these types of questions, you can bring up three quick concepts and that's going to work for really good flow for answers to those types of questions. Item eight, practice. Yep, there's no way we were getting through this video without me mentioning this item. Practice with another human being. This is the only way you'll know if your plan's working or not. This step is critical. Hop on Zoom practice with somebody else, repeat, repeat, repeat. Item nine, strategy. Practicing will help you determine strategy and without getting into too much detail on each item, just a few things to consider. So restating, I'm a big fan of restating the question, but is it part of your plan to restate? And if it is, just be consistent, do it on every question. Questioning. Do you have a questioning plan? For instance, if you get a vague behavioral question, are you always gonna say, Sue, great question. Would you like an internal example, an external example, or one that handles both? Because that exploration of the behavioral question gonna be super important. 
Then when you get to an open-ended question, do you always have some sample follow-up questions that you're going to ask? Are you always going to lean on that framework, etc.? So for me, I'm always going to ask three questions on an open-ended question, always. Hey, is this new or existing? Is it business versus technical? Is it internal or external or both? Depending on the question, but if I can ask all three, I always will. Then I'll always default to my PM 101 framework. Hey, what are the goals and objectives? What's the historical data, etc.? Next is adapting. Do you have a plan for how you're going to adapt? Are you going to go in and take control and ask the questions right off the bat, find out more about them, what their needs of the role are? Are you going to sit back and adapt to their personality style? Have an adapting plan because if you are a stronger personality that feels like you can go in and control the interview and you've practiced that and you have good flow there, definitely a good strategy, but you have to plan for it. Next in terms of strategy is time. I want you to clock yourself. Commonly asked questions, open-ended questions, behavioral questions, time yourself. I think that's a big part of the planning and then that will help and teach you to know, hey, where do I need to chop and where do I need to bolster, especially from a detail standpoint. From a strategy perspective, there is a lot to consider. So just wanted to throw a few items out there for you. Item 10, prepared questions. Just make sure you have prepared questions for your interviewer. Sometimes you get to them, sometimes you don't, but having them written down, so amazing because you don't have to use your brain in that facet during the interview. Bring them with you and it just saves that 5% of brain capacity that you might need to answer a really tricky question. Item 11, revisit the plan. You have to continually revisit and tweak your plan. This should be on a daily basis. Continue to look at what have you done? What have you completed? What do you still need to work on? What do you need to tweak? Just always be working on that plan. That should be a constant. Item 12, practice more. Yep, just had to say it. You can never do enough practice. Practice with a human being. Do it over and over and over again. This repetition is the key to success in interviewing. Go back to the Harvard study. The most successful people in the world, they don't wing it. They have a plan. And in no situation will the plan hurt your success. It can only help you. Good luck. Thanks so much.